Hey guys, coming up in this video, I have an inverter by Kelfa. Now this is an all-in-one inverter unit that's gonna have your solar inputs. It has a AC to DC charger, and it also has a DC to AC inverter built into one unit. This is their 48 volt model, and this can do a maximum of 3,500 watts of AC output at 120 volts, and it can peak out at 6,000 watts. The MPPT solar charge controller can do 4,400 watts of solar. It has a open circuit voltage of 60 to 145 volts, and this can have a input of 50 amps. The efficiency of the inverter is 91%, and we have a 10 millisecond delay of switching from battery to grid. And we also have a built-in 40 amp breaker on the side of the unit here, so this means that you can use anything from a seven gauge wire and lower. Uh, some of the things that came with the unit, uh, we have our owner's manual, and this is a pretty thick, uh, very hefty, lot of knowledge in here uh, type manual, so this is great. We also have a pair of paralleling communication cables. So we have the parallel communication, and then I believe these are for current uh, sharing communication. We also have a set of lugs. Uh, some screws to screw in the battery terminals into the case. And we also have some extra screws, which are the little black screws that you're gonna open up the case with, which is really nice that they actually give a few extra. Uh, they are black and small, and in the past I've lost them on other units. So it's nice that they have extras. Now with this unit, uh, I got the battery cable kit as well. So let's take a look at what comes with that. So with the battery kit, we have some wires that already have the ferro connectors on here. And this is gonna be meant for connecting your AC output. So this is gonna be seven gauge wire that they include, black, red, and then green slash yellow. So what I'm gonna do is actually put a piece of white tape on my red to signify that it's my neutral. We also have a set of uh, MC4 cables that you can use as kind of like jumper cables. You can put this in and then connect your solar panels directly here. So we have a black and a red. And then we also have some length of PV cables as well to run out to your panels. So a very interesting little kit here. Let's get this uh, up on the wall and we'll take a look. Actually, first I wanna open this uh, unit up and see what it looks like on the internals. And for that, there is a few screws on the side as well as there's a couple screws on the lid here that I'm gonna to remove to take a look inside. Okay, and here inside the unit, we do have a plastic cover here for airflow. The airflow is gonna be coming in from the vents here and pulled down through this channel and out the bottom where the fans are. And we can see here, so these are the PV cables. This is the positive for red and black is for the negative. And you can see here the negative is attached here. And this is the positive cable. You can see we have slight scuffing on the uh, insulation of the wire already. And I don't think I can get this on camera, but there also is slight scuffing here. So this is a bit of a sharp edge. Now I'm gonna fix that. I have this little sticky here. I'm gonna stick it on there and then hopefully that is going to stop it from touching that edge. So that is some that is a, de a design flaw that they can definitely fix. Uh, I'm not sure maybe if they could just make the cable longer so that it hugs the side of the case here and then goes down, but that is definitely a design flaw. And there we go. So now I have this sticky on here, which is gonna hold this off of the edge. So that is something that needs to be addressed. And you can see here, we have the back side of the connection. This is the AC. Everything feels tight. Uh, it's connected to the case here. So the case does have the proper connection. Uh, I wonder what that, that is a 40 amp AC breaker. That's good down there. Uh, everything looks good. I think this is the communication board right here. Then we have some switching here to go from uh, grid to inverter mode. Some pretty nice sized capacitors here. And it all looks very clean. And we have a bit of a um, transformer here. And looking at the bottom here, you can see we have our AC in, AC out, 
our on off switch, a grounding lug, RS4852, USB, RS4851, some relays, our parallel connection. This is to connect multiple units in parallel, battery connection, and PV connection up here. So let's get this unit back together up on the wall and we'll start making some connections and see what it can do. And mounting is pretty simple. We have two holes here that I just pre-drilled some screws onto the wall. So you should just be able to hang it on there. And then I need to take this uh, cover plate off. And there's one more screw that goes in to hold it from tipping up. And then you can see the battery connection here. So we have the positive and negative. We have a nice little separator here that's gonna keep the lugs separated. So we'll get that in. And then here's the PV connection, positive, negative. And then here's the AC. So you can see ground, line, or load, neutral, and then the same on the output. So we'll get those connected and turn this on. Okay, I have all my connections made. I'm leaving this open for now because I wanna test for a neutral ground bond. Now I wanna let it be known, I'm not an electrician, I'm not certified. This is not advice, don't follow what I'm doing. Um, just a disclaimer. But you can see here, we have our black wire, white wire, and ground wire. And then we have our battery connection. Now I have this cable connected up to do a pre-charge on the resistor. And I got the PV wired up. And that's coming up to here, which I will pull off of this inverter and uh, use that PV, which the sun is starting to go down, so I might not see much. And then you can see on my panel, I have the cable coming in wraps around. Now I did have to cut back some of the sheathing to get the ground wire down to the bar here, but then I have my neutral on the neutral bar and I just have the live wire line wire on this side of the panel and going down to this dual Siemens 215 amp breaker, which is gonna power this power bar as well as this outlet down here. Okay, let's turn it on now with the on switch and maybe it's got a little bit of a startup delay. There it goes. Okay, and right away we have a fault and I see that we're on lithium. So let me see if I can change that. Okay, I'm under user defined, but I'm still getting a fault. Error 58. Let's see what error 58 is. Discharge alarm, state of charge less than 50%. Setting number 25 is to turn that alarm off. Okay, so I found something pretty important on the initial setup. On default, it comes as PAL, which is running inverters in parallel. You can hear now it just clicked on the inverter. Setting number 31 needs to be changed to SIG, which is when single inverter is used, the default is SIG mode for EN and US series models can be set. So they have it set for default parallel mode which will not allow the inverter to turn on. Uh, it needs to be switched to SIG. So now we're on, let's change over the solar. Now I don't have much solar coming in right now. The sun is starting to go down. I see an icon on there for the sun. Okay, now it says we are charging. And the solar right now is barely enough just to cover the inverter running. Well, I got 0 0.3, 0 0.4, so about half an amp going in right now off of solar, so we are producing something. Now we have one amp coming in there, so we're covering the inverter usage. Okay, so something I'm gonna test is whether we have a neutral ground bond. Now the inverter is on, so if I go from the ground to the neutral, there's no continuity. You can see there are continuity. So this unit does not create, unless there's a setting, it does not create a neutral ground bond. And you can see here, if we go from this plate to the ground bar, we have 120 volts. So the voltage is good, but there's no neutral ground bond, which means that I may only use this as an off-grid inverter and not connect any input, because what'll happen is I want to have at least one location with a neutral ground bond in order to create that circuit. But if I was to go and hook it to the grid, then I'm gonna have my neutral ground bond at the main. Then that neutral ground bond is gonna be behind the inverter. 
So even though in a grid out situation, this is gonna be creating the power and that's where you should have the neutral ground bond. But because it is behind this, it is gonna create the circuit, anything beyond this panel. That's my theory. Uh, if you disagree, let me know in the comments section. But if I hook up the grid now, then that's great. Uh, it's behind the source of power. Inverter hooked up, I have just a temporary AC input. So first I'm gonna do a heat gun. Oh, I'm gonna turn my two loads on. So now let's do a heat gun. So right now we are discharging at a thousand watts. So now it's almost 2,000 watts. So a space heater on medium, that's 2,400, 2,500, 2,600 watts. Let's go full blast. Okay, we are about to pass 3,000 watts. So 3,300 watts right now. I wonder how much my uh, I'm discharging on my battery. 64, 65 amps right now. So we're pretty much right at the borderline of the max of this inverter. We're at 3,400, 3.42, 3.43. So that's about 3,430, no issue. And you can hear the fans going down now and off. So it's just when the loads came on, the fans were on, that's good. So we have variable span, uh, variable uh, fan speeds. Let's turn this heater back on. Fan on this heater is louder than the fans on that. That's actually pretty quiet. I would also like to try and connect this to solar assistant. I think that would be really cool if it did. So I'm gonna try out a few things and see if I can't get it to work.